How do you stop Urza Cheerios? Pour milk on it. Next on Commander Replay. Welcome back everyone. Today we're talking about Urza Lord High Artificer and how to stop high power Urza combo decks. <laughs> So this video will be primarily focused on the commander format, although there may be a few things in here for modern as well, if there's some modern players looking for some answers to Urza. Anyway, before we get going, I do have to give a shout out to my Patreon supporter Cadus for coming up with the awesome title of this video. And he is best known for playing that Nicole Bolas the Ravager deck, which wheels me into oblivion and then I get super frustrated. Anyway, thank you to Cadus. And with that, let's get going. So let's take a look at Urza Lord High Artificer and what it does. It's two blue blue for a 1-4. When it enters the battlefield, create a 0-0 colorless construct artifact creature token with this creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact you control. Already a very solid ability in that it can make a creature that scales up as you get more artifacts in play. And note that creature does count itself, so it does come in as a 1-1 one -one at the very least. Next, this is where the card really starts to get very powerful and probably a little bit too good. It says, tap an untapped artifact you control, add a blue. And then finally, pay five, shuffle your library, then exile the top card until end of turn. You may play that card without paying its mana cost. Oh man, so this thing has just all the things you don't want to see on a creature, really. So it's got an ETB ability that makes a huge creature. It generates mana with all of the artifacts you have in play, colored mana nonetheless. And finally, it's got the text that says, play things without paying its mana cost. Lots of room to break this commander. And so with every set that comes out, there's always one legendary creature that people really latch onto and play a lot. Uh, I went to Commander Night last night, and I ran into Urza a couple times already, and the card hasn't even been released in paper yet, uh, in addition to seeing it online just a little bit yesterday as well. So people seem to be really hot on Urza Lord High Artificer and how to break Urza Lord High Artificer. From what I saw yesterday, the deck is very powerful, but it did seem to struggle against other really powerful competitive EDH style decks. In the builds that I was looking at, it didn't seem like it was able to run as much removal and interaction and counter spells as the other decks, and really had to rely very heavily on just getting a bunch of artifacts and kind of racing to the combo. So the good news is, at least at this point in time, it's not the most broken commander we've ever seen, which is cool. But the abilities on this thing are still immensely powerful, and if you're playing in any setting that's less extreme than competitive EDH, there's a high chance that this commander is just absolutely going to wreck you. Unless, of course, you bring a high number of answers to deal with Urza so that you don't have to get absolutely crushed by it. Again, because we're talking about a card that both generates fast mana and is allowed to cast things without paying their mana cost. Super broken abilities. One other thing about Urza that I saw last night as well is that even though I haven't seen it win a game yet, the power is there. The players were very close to winning the game each time, but I was fortunate enough to be holding up interaction as well as a few other players, so we were able to stop them. And even though some of the competitive players in my meta were talking about it and having some struggles with it initially, I think they will figure out how to best play this deck over time. And one of my predictions is that it may be less about straight going infinite, and it might become more about being able to generate way more mana than your opponents and let's say, I don't know, just slam an expropriate or something like that on turn 4 or turn 5. So first up, let's look at some of the more powerful things that Urza can do. Here's a bunch of artifacts that all say they do something only if they're untapped. So the worst three are going to be Trinisphere, Winter Orb, and Static Orb. Uh, and I did run into a couple Static Orbs yesterday facing this thing. And uh, yeah, Static Orb is a really nasty card. So what makes these so good in the Urza deck is that Urza can tap these cards for mana so that they don't impact the Urza player. Making these effects one-sided is unbelievably strong. And even looking at Howling Mine, which is a seemingly innocent card, if Urza's drawing a few extra cards without having to sink any mana into it at all, and in fact generating additional mana by doing it, yeah, it's really good. Paying two mana to draw, I don't know, let's say three, four, five cards over a couple turns is really, really powerful. So these are all things that you want to watch out for, and if you have the ability, I would look at getting rid of these because these can cause major problems. And the other thing too is that, especially with Winter Orb and Static Orb, because those affect cards on tapping, you are definitely going to want to leave Instant Speed Removal open to deal with those in case they slam those down. You don't want to be tapped out every single turn and just run the risk of not being able to untap enough things to have any kind of real impact on the game. And we'll get into some really nice one mana and other cheap options to be able to deal with those as the video goes on. Next up, we see actual combo pieces. These are the things that are probably going to be involved in actually winning the game. So these are definitely things you want to shoot down. 
Uh, you really don't want these staying in play. Paradox Engine is the big one. And with the Paradox Engine, you really want cheap instant speed interaction to deal with this thing. Dealing with the Paradox Engine at sorcery speed probably isn't going to work. Because once that Paradox Engine is in, they're probably off to the races, and you're not going to have another chance to respond. So definitely leave up some instant speed interaction for Paradox Engine. Also, that should impact how you play each turn. If you have instant speed interaction, you're going to want to leave mana open. You don't just want to tap out, especially if you have something. Always be thinking, when's that Paradox Engine coming? When's that infinite mana combo coming? I better have some mana and some cards to be able to deal with these things when they happen. So the cards in this video will fall into five primary categories of how to stop Urza. The first one is going to be cheap artifact removal. The second one will be mass artifact removal. And note that you're going to want a little bit of both here. Cheap creature removal is another great option. Stopping activated abilities is a great option. And then finally, there's some stacks and prison effects that can also stop an Urza in its tracks. So the cards that we'll be looking at will fall into one of these five categories, and I would say that you probably want at least two of these different categories covered, if not three or more. So Urza is essentially a blue artifact deck. The first thing that might come to mind is cards that hose artifacts. However, these cards aren't actually as effective as you think they might be against Urza, because the activated abilities actually occur on Urza itself and not on the artifacts. So these cards would shut off the artifacts in the deck, but wouldn't necessarily stop Urza and its ability to generate mana and its ability to play cards off the top of the deck. So while these cards are certainly fine at hosing any number of other things and might hit Urza a little bit, might make things a little bit more difficult for them, probably won't have the desired effect of stopping Urza dead in its tracks. Here's a few more cards that are a little bit better than the last group, but still not the best when it comes to dealing with Urza. So the problem with each of these cards is that it says it doesn't stop mana abilities, so if you name Urza with one of these cards, they won't be able to use the 5 mana ability of play cards off the top of the library, but they'll still be able to generate a lot of mana with all the artifacts they have in play. And there's times that they may be enough to stop the Urza from what they're doing, but there's other times where they'll still be able to generate so much mana that they won't have the effect that you were necessarily looking for. So, not bad options to have, but not the best ones either. But that brings us to some really good options to shut down Urza, and these are all cards that prevent Urza from being able to use its activated abilities. The one I like the most is Linvala, it's a card I used to play in 1 vs 1 a lot, but it is a little bit slow at 4 mana, they could already win the game by that point if things go well for them. The other two are much quicker at 2 mana, and I really like these because blue doesn't interact with artifacts super well, especially once they're in play. Maybe some spot removal on the Revoker, but the Curse Totem is going to be a headache for them for sure. Also, one of the things I noticed is that Urza didn't seem to run a ton of interaction, at least in these current builds that I was looking at. So, if that holds up, then Revoker is probably a fine option. And that does have to do with the fact that, like, if you're playing cards off the top of your deck, hitting cheap interaction is not really what you're looking to do with 5 mana, especially counter spells, uh, because there's probably not a target on the stack for them. So, these are some really good options. Curse Totem, gonna be a fantastic option. You're just gonna play it, leave it there, and watch the Urza player cry. Next up, we have a really interesting set of cards uh, that also stop activated abilities. That's going to be Arrest and Prison Term in white. And there are so many of these type of enchantments in white that stop creatures from attacking, blocking, and activated abilities. So these are just two examples. So you could run many, many of these, potentially. Prison Term is a really cool one because it does allow you to move it as creatures into the, enter the battlefield. It's a card that I've thought about periodically. It never seems to make it into a deck, but it is in the back of my mind as something that I should probably look at a little bit more. Also, Ice Cage. Ice Cage in blue, even though it's a little bit fragile, because Urza's not running a ton of interaction, it might stick there for a few turns, which might be just enough until you can find something a little bit more permanent to deal with it. So interesting set of cards right here. Definitely not something to discount if you're looking for cheap and easy ways to stop an Urza, as well as anything else, too. You can put these on anything, so, so there's just a lot of utility there. Here's one that wasn't really on my radar right from the get-go, and uh, one that I had to dig a little bit to find. Uh, a card called Kill Switch. You pay three, and then you pay two. Tap all other artifacts. They don't untap during their controller's untap step until Kill Switch becomes untapped. I feel like it's going to be pretty good. It might be just a touch slow at three and two, but if you can get it going before that Urza player really gets going, uh, I think you're going to have a lot of success with it. So it's an option that I think could be pretty good, but I would need to see it in action to get a feel for it since it's a card that just doesn't show up in Commander all that much. So next, let's go color by color. And the color with the best options by far is red. Red has some of the best anti-blue cards ever printed in Pyroblast, Red Elemental Blast, and Active Volcano. And I've been main decking these in certain decks where I know I'm going to be facing a lot of blue. You won't find a cheaper or more efficient source of blue removal. These things are all fantastic. 
highly recommend all of them. Next, we have another set of really great red options for dealing with artifacts. Uh, Shattering Spree, Vandal Blast, Biforce, all fantastic cards because they're very flexible. The only drawback to them is that they are all sorcery speed, so when you're talking about a Paradox Engine coming down, they might be a little bit too slow, but they have the ability to stop all the stuff before the Paradox Engine that can cause a problem, and that's really good, and Vandal Blast, Shattering Spree can get down for one mana, by force, two mana for a single artifact, still very reasonable, but with that flexibility of being able to hit more stuff. And importantly, these can wipe the board of artifacts without hitting your own artifacts, so that's a really big deal as well. But one card that I'd like to talk about that I don't think many people are aware of, I've started to see it in that more competitive meta that I play in a little bit, and it does work. That's Meltdown. Destroy each artifact with total casting cost X or less. So if someone has one of those crazy mana rock starts where they're laying down multiple rocks on turn one, turn two, Meltdown is a great way to clear all that nonsense up. Now, it will hit your own, so you do have to be careful. Probably a little bit better in a deck that's not running tons and tons of artifacts. I've been messing with an Akirian Bruce deck. Meltdown's probably not the best option in there. The other three are going to look significantly better for that deck. But in, let's say, a green deck where you don't have a lot of artifacts, Meltdown, fantastic. So definitely one worth looking at, especially if everything they're playing is zero for like one or two mana, you can pretty much clear out most of the artifacts on board for the Urza, including that token that they made. Next, we see two of the most efficient pieces of artifact removal ever printed. Both one mana instants, Smelt destroys target artifact and Crush destroys target non-creature artifact. Smelt obviously the better of the two, but when someone's playing a Paradox Engine, you don't care which one's in your hand as long as you have one of them. And these are going to be the best cards to deal with a Paradox Engine combo, because you can leave up just one red, which means you can still do plenty of things during your turn with your mana, and leave up just that one to be able to stop that Paradox Engine combo, so these are a great place to be. Next up, a card that gets forgotten a little bit is Gorilla Shaman. It's red for a 1-1 that says pay XX1 to destroy target non-creature artifact with converted mana cost X or less. So essentially the way this works, if you're looking at zero cost artifacts, you can pay one to blow up zero cost artifacts. Now to blow up something like a soul ring that costs one, that will cost you three mana, which is a little bit high, but it's still repeatable artifact removal. So if the game goes long for some reason, it's still in your back pocket and it's still there for you to use. But you probably wouldn't want to run this if you are running something like Curse Totem, which will shut down all of the activated abilities. So it's one to think about. I don't personally run this one because I play red white and there's a lot of great options for me anyway, but it's still one that you can take a look at. If you're in like a red green deck that can generate tons of mana and the mana cost isn't that much of an issue to you, sure, why not? Gorilla Shaman, go for it. And then I got curious about what kind of creature removal existed in red, and the options are not amazing. On this page, Rending Volley is probably the best of the bunch and probably very reasonable for modern. But with this page and this following page, I probably wouldn't run these in commander because they don't scale super well. Doing four damage to a creature is fine in the early game, but is gonna lose value as the game goes longer, especially if bigger stuff is coming down. So uh, I don't love any of these. Parch and Lightning Dart were interesting in that uh, they're both instant and they get stronger when targeting blue creatures. They get up to that four damage with a little bit more flexibility on them. But like I said, overall, I'm not in love with these. Uh, we see a few more at three converted mana costs where we get a little bit more freedom of targeting, but three mana is going to be a bit slow without the ability to really scale super great into the late game. I've thought about Char and Firecraft periodically, haven't really pulled the trigger on them. Collective Defiance uh, is a very interesting card because you can wheel if you need to, but again, I'm not in love with these, and most of these get outclassed by just running a Chaos Warp instead. But yeah, Red has some absolutely fantastic options for dealing with Urza. Let's take a look at White. Next, we see some white board wipes, and these are great. Merciless Eviction, obviously black and white, but problem is that they are slow. Urza can be a fast deck. The game could be over before turn six, and you have a chance to cast one of these. Now, our revelation will get better if opponent's slamming a bunch of free cost artifacts. Uh, you should get to that 10 non-land permanents pretty quickly, so you can pay it for triple white, which is pretty cool, and a card that I really like anyway. But if we're running these, we will need to supplement this removal package with other things that can bridge the gap until we have enough time and mana to be able to cast these. And look no further than your primary mono white removal that's going to be Swords and Path. Urza is a deck where that commander needs to stay in play, so just getting that commander out of play is going to cause some tempo issues for them, so it can at least buy you a turn or two and hopefully get you to that board wipe that you need. Uh, a few other things that are very interesting, maybe less effective than Swords and Path, 
but still reasonable cards nonetheless, are going to be Winds of Abandon, brand new card. I like this one because of the overload ability. You know, if you need to get rid of something early, it's there for you, but if you need it to win the game for you, it can also do that later. So very good flexibility there. Chain to the Rocks is one that I've always thought about a bunch, and I just never seem to run as much as I should. Obviously, you need to be playing red because it requires a mountain, but one mana essentially O-ring a creature until it leaves the battlefield. And then a potentially more permanent solution is Darksteel Mutation, a nasty card that removes all abilities from the commander. Very reasonable. The only thing you want to be careful of, especially if you're like a Boros deck or some sort of combat-based ground deck, is that they now have an indestructible blocker, so that can soak up a lot of damage. So Darksteel Mutation works best in a deck that has some amount of flying or trample or other evasion. Here's two options in white that I really like, just as cards in general. Uh, Blind Obedience is good for shutting off a lot of things. You're going to make the artifacts come in tapped, so, you know, it's not the end-all be-all, but it will slow opponents down, and for a mere two mana, plus all of the other benefits that it gives, it makes it really hard for players to be explosive. Uh, so I think that one's very cool. And with Aura of Silence, if you can get that down before your opponent gets their artifacts into play, they're going to have a nightmare trying to cast anything, because when you make a free artifact go to two, that's a really big deal mana-wise. You know, even if they're just trying to get their Paradox Engine into the play, making Paradox Engine cost seven, plus the fact that Aura of Silence is going to be a removal just sitting there, waiting for you to use it on that Paradox Engine, I really like what Aura of Silence brings to the table for this, and is probably a card that more people should just run, like, in general anyway, because it's really good at shutting down a lot of different types of decks. Next, there's some very interesting cards that I think these are fine against Urza, but they don't stop it dead in its tracks. Uh, so maybe not the primary thing that I would go for, but they do stop other decks from doing stuff too, which is also important. You don't want to spend all of your resources on one player and then get blown out by the other two. Each player can't play more than one spell each turn. And these have the ability to stop unfair decks from doing unfair things. So Urza can activate that ability during other turns, so maybe it's not the most effective against them, but it will stop them from being able to play their entire deck in one turn. So maybe not the best, but certainly something to take a look at. And then we see some white commanders and one blue-white commander that are all very nasty against Urza. Urza, with Kataki's War Rage, and we see Linvala again being very, very good against Urza. Either giving all the artifacts an upkeep of one, or Linvala just preventing the activation of Urza, all fantastic. Thalia will make it harder for them to play through their entire deck, which can easily throw them off their game a little bit. And then Lavinia counters things that are cast for free. So if these cards tickle your fancy, either run them out of the command zone or run them in the 99, whichever you prefer. But these are some really nice ways to cause some headaches for Urza as well. And then, of course, white has the nuclear option, which is humility. All creatures lose all abilities and have base power, toughness, 1-1. One, one. Super, super nasty. Only recommended if your deck does not need creatures to do things, or if you're comfortable with your creatures being 1-1s. One, one potential reason you may be okay with that is that if you have a lot of plus 1, plus 1 counters on your creatures, but as we all know, white does not have plus 1, plus 1 counters. But yeah, if you don't want anyone doing anything at all, humility is there for you if you need it. And finally, I want to talk about some cards that I run in Boros all the time. That's Return to Dust, Crush Contraband, and Wear Tear. And I actually did have some of these in hand yesterday while I was facing Urza, and the problem is they are actually a little bit slow against how fast that deck is, especially Crush and Return to Dust. Four mana is a lot against a deck that's making tons more mana than you, and it's early in the game. Wear Tear wasn't as bad, leaving up two isn't nearly as much of an issue, but honestly, I would have still preferred just having a Crush or Smelt in hand. These are great cards, and if you're in a meta that's not just super high power, fast combo decks, then these are probably great, but if you're talking about decks that can win in four or five turns, these do lose some value because they can be slow. Unfortunately, in his infinite wisdom, Richard Garfield waited no longer than Alpha to print us Disenchant to be able to deal with artifacts and enchantments quickly and cheaply. So next, moving on to green. Green also has some really great ways to blow up all the artifacts. Two of them can be a little bit pricier, but green does ramp very well. If you're also talking about things like mana dorks or a Salvala or an Azusa, mana cost becomes much less relevant. So as a green player, you should be able to get to these things pretty quickly just because of your ability to ramp. And again, blowing up all the artifacts is going to be really good against Urza. But if we do need to bridge that gap between the time that Urza comes into play and the time it takes to actually cast one of these, uh, green does have a few options that you're probably very familiar with. Nature's Claim, super good card. One mana, any artifact or enchantment is very, very good. That four life is like so irrelevant in Commander that it just does not matter. Naturalize, another great option, the color shift to disenchant. Uh, Crows and Grip, most green players running that one already anyway. Maybe a little bit pricey depending on what's going on, but if you have a mana dork down, it should be fine. 
Uh, Beast Within, same sort of thing, but great utility there. There's always something you're going to have to blow up. So some really great options in green. I would probably run a bunch of these. If you're facing an Urza, I would probably just run a bunch of these anyway, because they're just good cards and you're always going to need them. So... And then there's ways to turn Urza into a vegetable with green. Many people use Song of the Dryads. I think a lot of people forget about Lignify. It's there if you need it, and opponents gonna have to jump through some hoops if they wanna be able to use their commander again. Moving on, we get to the two colors that do not deal with artifacts particularly well. That's gonna be black and blue. Here we see three things that show up pretty commonly in black that are not going to be as good as you might hope against Urza because of the fact that Urza creates that token when it comes into play. Opponent will have two creatures, and playing these cards only a single time is not going to get Urza out of play like you would hope it would. Now, if you have the ability to recur it very quickly, then it may not be a big deal. If you play it, sacrifice it to itself, and reanimate it, problem solved. But now you're talking about needing two cards instead of one, and that may not always pan out for you. So these will lose just a little bit of value against Urza, but great cards otherwise. And that's where I think you want to look at more instant speed black removal with Malicious Affliction, Go for the Throat, and Victim of Night. I do love me some Victim of Night, by the way. It's probably just a little bit less good than the other two because of the casting costs, but still a super sweet card, and I definitely overrate it in draft most of the time. But yeah, so black because it can't deal with artifacts super well, your plan in dealing with Urza that doesn't rely on colorless cards is probably just going to be to kill Urza a few times and keep it out of play. So targeted instant speed removal is going to be your best bet there, and black has some very, very very good options when it comes to that. Moving on to blue, mass bounce is something that blue typically relies on pretty heavily, and some of that stuff is going to lose value against Urza, because again, we're talking about zero cost artifacts, opponent can get them into play very, very easily, so blue mass bounce, probably not going to be as effective as you'd like it to be against Urza, it might buy a little bit of time, but probably not as much as you're hoping. So again, with blue, you're probably going to want to look at your very standard blue creature removal options, it's going to be Pongify, Reality Shift, Rapid Hybridization, get that Urza out of play. And then, of course, you want to supplement that with any number of counter spells. Swan Song, Force of Will, Mana Drain, Counter Spell, all fantastic options. Really, any cheaply costed counter spell will do the job. Again, you want to keep Urza out of play and you want to keep the combo pieces out of play. Counter Spells, the most flexible of all the removal, perhaps. But the only thing it cares about is that it's on the stack. So like I said, Blue and Black doesn't have the tools to necessarily deal with artifacts the same way. It does have some great ways to deal with creatures, which may be a great way to stop or buy some time to be able to deal with that Urza player. But it's also going to be a really good idea to supplement your Blue and Black decks with some of these colorless options, most of which we've talked about already, but it does make sense in the context of talking about them, especially for colors that don't have great ways to deal with artifacts. So Cursed Totem, probably the best card on this list. I also really like Phyrexian Revoker. Um, there are some things you can do there. Because it's a creature, you can bring it back, especially if you're in like a black deck. Trinisphere is a very interesting one because it's actually a card that's good in Urza, but is also good against Urza. So if you play your own Trinisphere, then opponent spells are going to cost three more. And while it doesn't stop them dead in their tracks, it will cause problems for them. And that could be enough to keep them from winning the game. But even though things like Pything Needle, Sorcerer's Spyglass, Damping Matrix aren't necessarily the most effective against Urza itself, there is just a lot of utility with those, and they do find ways to be useful against a lot of other decks as well. So yeah, if you're in blue or black, Definitely going to want some creature removal. You're probably going to want at least a couple of these artifact options. I think a few of these are expensive and a few of these are cheap, so you'll have to work on whatever your budget is. Personally, I think Cursed Totem is probably the best, as long as it's not shutting off anything in your deck. But the more targeted ones, also good if you need to stop some Planeswalkers or some other nonsense things that opponents may play. So wrapping up, the five things that we're going to want against Urza are going to be cheap artifact removal, and like I said, you really want to focus on instant speed right here so that you can stop your opponent from comboing off. Next, we talked about a bunch of mass artifact removal, all very good, but it does take a while to get there, so that's where you're going to want some other things to keep opponent from winning before you can get to your mass artifact removal. We talked about some cheap creature removal, all great options to be running anyway, always some creatures worth blowing up in Commander. Next, we talked about stopping activated abilities. That's going to be our things like Curse Totem and Phyrexian Revoker. Uh, and then finally, we have our stacks and prison effects. Cards like Prison Term, Arrest are really interesting. Humility is like a bomb going off on the battlefield. We saw some of the legendary creatures that can stop Urza in its tracks. So anyway, I hope you learned a few things about Urza Lord High Artificer and how you can stop Urza Lord High Artificer so that you can give your deck the opportunity to try and do what it wants to do. What cards have you guys found effective against Urza? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching.